Hi, kindergartners. I am so excited that I finally get to talk to you. Um, I am filming a video for you from my home office. This is kind of like my classroom at home. So I'm going to be trying to post videos at least once a week and talking to you so you get to see me and hear my voice and all that kind of stuff. So um, as you can see behind me, just so you know, this is a picture of Sean and I. It's called a caricature. It's something that an artist draws. It's kind of a funny picture of you. So I got that done in 2013 when I came to Seattle before I even lived here and I was visiting Sean and we got that done at Pike Place Market. So it's kind of an old fun picture. Um, so I thought it would be really fun to get on here and read a story that we started but we didn't get to finish before school um, got canceled. So do you remember when we read Giant Pandas and we just started it? Well, I'm going to finish reading it to you. And when I'm reading it, I want you to be thinking about um, if it talks about some of the four needs that animals have. Remember, they need air, they need water, they need shelter, and they need food. So see if this book talks about those four needs. Let's review some of the things that we read already in this book since it's been a little bit of time. So it talks about, here's the first picture of the giant panda. It kind of talks about where they live in mountainous areas and I see some bamboo around them. This talks about all the space where they used to live in this darker yellow color and where they live now. And then this is a picture of the giant panda. It talks about where it got its name. It says they're part of the bear family. And then on this one, this is labeling all the different parts of the panda bear. And remember, I thought this one was really cool because where they have black fur, their skin is actually black underneath. And then where they have the white fur, their skin is actually pink underneath. So do you remember when we were watching the video of the pandas and the baby panda was like a really light pink color? That was because its fur was just all white and it was a pink, so it had pink skin. But when they get this black fur on their legs and their arms and their ears, and I guess on their eyes, their skin is black underneath. I thought that was really interesting. So we are gonna start reading on this page, okay? So I'll show you the picture and I might have a hard time reading upside down. So I'll read it to you and you listen and I'll show you the picture after, okay? So it says, giant pandas have poor eyesight but they have excellent sense of smell and hearing. In fact, pandas are hard to find in the wild because they can hide when they smell or hear people coming. Normally, giant pandas are shy and tend to stay by themselves. When they want to communicate with one another, they use about 11 different kinds of sounds. They bark, growl, squeal, and make other sounds to mean different things. And then this label says a bark means hello and growling, snorting, growling or snorting means I'm frightened. I would say he looks pretty frightened right there. So he must be growling or snorting. Giant pandas also communicate by leaving their scent to tell other pandas they are in the area. They do this by rubbing a smelly liquid from their glands under their tails onto rocks or trees. Do you see this one rubbing on the tree? That's telling other pandas, this is my tree. Thousands of years ago, giant pandas ate only meat, but over time, their diet changed mostly to plants, mainly bamboo. Occasionally, they eat grasses, roots, vines, honey, or even meat. Occasionally means sometimes. I think that's talking about one of the needs of an animal. Bamboo. Because bamboo is not very nutritious, a giant panda must spend between 10 and 16 hours a day eating in order to stay strong and healthy. The average panda eats about 27 pounds of bamboo in a single day. That is a lot of bamboo. I bet some of you, that's about weighs about as much as some of you. Giant pandas have claws on each of their paws. They also have a special thumb on the front of their paws. They use their thumbs and claws to grasp onto the bamboo. 
So this is a picture. It's a close-up. It's like a, it's called a zoom in. And what Gail Gibbons does here is she's zooming in on this picture of uh, the panda's foot, and she's labeling the thumb, which is right here. So pandas have thumbs just like you. And it says the thumb is a rigid extension. So that helps them hold on to the bamboo. And then this is showing their claws. Pretty cool. Giant pandas use their big teeth and powerful jaws to crush and eat the bamboo stalks. They also eat the leaves. Oh wow, this is a cool close-up picture. Saying that this is their, um, their jaws are up here and down here. So they have jaws just like us. Our jaws down here and their jaws here. All goes all around. So our jaws all around our mouth and their jaws too. And then they have teeth right here. Those big sharp ones and these big sharp ones. They have also have tiny little ones like us too. Giant pandas can be playful and athletic. They do somersaults and climb trees quite easily. Also, giant pandas can swim holding their head above water while they paddle with their legs. This book is making me wonder if, um, pandas have webbed feet like tigers. Do you remember when we watched that video about tigers and it said that they were really good swimmers because they had webbed toes. Do you remember webbing as little skin in between their fingers or their claws? So it helps them push through the water like a flipper. I wonder if panda bears have that same thing. Giant pandas don't have a regular sleeping place. They sleep on the ground, in the base of a hollow tree, or wherever and whenever they feel tired. They sleep two to four hours at a time. Male and female, which means boy and girl, pandas come together to mate in the spring. After mating, the male goes off on his own. The female makes a bed of bamboo, twigs, grasses, and in a cave or among rocks or in a hollow tree. This place is called a den. So this kind of talks about, this page talks about one of the four needs of an animal, which is shelter. Remember a shelter? We go, shelter, a place to live. So this page is talking about the shelter of a, a panda bear. And if you look at this, this is showing a picture of their den. See how it's labeled right there, den? It's in the hall of a, hollow of a tree. A hollow means that there's nothing inside. So this tree trunk has nothing inside. So they put twigs and grasses and roots and things like that in there to keep them warm. So it's like a blanket for bears. And then they go in there and they lay. In the autumn, about five months later, the mother panda gives birth to one or two babies called cubs. Immediately after giving birth, she begins nursing one of the cubs. A mother will raise only one cub at a time. Only one will survive. In their natural habitat, mothers usually give birth every one to three years. So a mother will give birth to two cubs and then only one of the cubs survive because she can only take care of one. So it says, um, this is her with her little Cub, if you can kind of see it. Remember, they're pink when they're born and they're so, so small. So that's the little cub right there. And it says, young giant pandas are called cubs. And then up here it says, a habitat is where an animal lives in nature. A cub is very small. It only weighs about three ounces and is about six inches long. The mother is about 900 times larger than her cub. It's amazing how gentle she can be. Because if she's so much bigger than her cub, huh, so she has to be really careful with it to make sure that it doesn't get hurt. Look how small it is. The cub has pink skin all over and some fuzzy white fur. Its cry sounds like a human baby and the mother holds her cub almost all the time. She won't leave to get food for herself for about one week after her cub is born. Here's another picture of her with her baby cub. In about 40 days, which is about one month, a little bit longer than a month, the cub opens its eyes. 
it has its black and white markings and is still helpless. When the mother wants to move her cub, she gently picks it up by its neck and carries it from place to place. Sometimes you might see if you have a cat or a dog who's had kittens or puppies, sometimes they carry their, um, their babies too and they hold them by the back of their neck right here. It's called the nape of their neck and it doesn't hurt them. So if they're holding them in their mouth, it doesn't hurt the babies, but that's what, how they carry them around because they don't have hands like us. So do you see how it's in its mouth right here and it's just holding the back of his neck. About four, let's see, at about four months, the old, or excuse me, about at about four months old, the cub is able to crawl. At seven months old, the cub can run and climb trees. It weighs about 20 pounds and has learned how to eat bamboo. At about two years old, the young giant panda weighs about 120 pounds. It has learned all it can from its mother, and now it is time for the young panda to live on its own. In another two years, it will be able to have its own babies. So when pandas are about four years old, that's when they start having babies. A little bit different than humans, huh? Over the years, the number of giant pandas has become smaller because of the destruction of their natural habitat. Remember, habitats where animals live in nature. Um, accidental deaths in traps set for other animals, that's how some panda bears die, is in um, traps that are set for other animals, and hunting pandas for their fur. Because of their size, adult giant pandas have few natural enemies except for people. So that means that they're so big that other animals are usually kind of scared of them. So really the only things are other things that can hurt panda bears are people. So here's some picture, here's a picture of um, the panda bear. And these are hunters and this I believe, this is a hunter too, do you see his? Around 1900, there were about 65,000 giant pandas living in the wild. Today, there are fewer than 1,000. That's a little more than, um, that's a, 1,000 is a little bit more than how many kids are at Discovery Elementary. So that's not very many. For all the pandas in the world, there's only about a thousand left. The people of China are trying to protect them. They have set aside large areas called reserves where giant pandas can live safely. Also, it is a crime to harm or kill a giant panda. So you can get in trouble if you they find out that you're hurting or trying to catch a giant panda for their fur. In China, in a small number of other countries, scientists are trying to help increase the population of giant pandas. These pandas are cared for in captivity. Captivity means um, like a small space, kind of like a zoo. Animals that are in a zoo are in captivity. The scientists try to encourage the pandas to give birth and care for their cubs. So here's some pictures of some scientists who are helping pandas in captivity. Do you see the little baby in there? This is, do you remember when we watched that video of the panda bears? There was some panda bears in captivity. There was some baby pandas that were had people around and those were panda bears in captivity. They were trying to help them so that they could help make the population or how many panda bears make it go up so that panda bears don't become extinct. When the young giant pandas are capable of living on their own, some of them are released back into the wild um, or in the wild nature reserves of China. Others are placed in zoos, so when they become old enough to um, help themselves, they'll sometimes release them into um, the nature reserve, so kind of like a, it's nature, it's um, not like a zoo because there's not many people around, but they're being observed to make sure they're safe, or they'll put them in a zoo. So this is in a nature reserve, and this is in a zoo. Whenever there are giant pandas in a zoo, people love to come see them. They look like big, chubby, black and white teddy bears that are very playful. Oh my goodness, that's so silly. Look at this panda bear doing somersaults. Looks like they play with ball, a ball. Oh my goodness, so fun. It is so much fun watching them. Giant pandas are one of the rarest and most appealing animals in the world. They're so cute. They always look like they're smiling to me. 
And then these are some more facts about pandas. So if you want to, I can read that to you a little bit later. Pretty cool. So I want you to respond to this video and I want you to tell me if you, one thing that this book talks about, one need that it talks about. So um, remember needs of an animal are food, water, shelter, and air. So those are the four things animals need. I want you to tell me, it talked a lot about shelter and it talked a lot about food. Tell me one of the things that you learned from the book that an, a panda bear eats or where it can live. What is its shelter, okay? So I had so much fun reading with you and I will post another video of me reading too soon, okay? All right, I miss you guys.